Welcome to the Carbon Channel, and today I'm going to take you through the DCM LX power amps and show you how to set them up with a system. Should you be in the market for a new power amp, let's quickly review the features of the amps and check to see if this is the right amp for you. To start, ask yourself the following questions. Are you of the plug and play mindset and simply want to plug in your loudspeakers without having to think about crossover points, biamping, time alignment, and other fine details? If your answer is yes, then you should consider Carbon's HD and DCM L power amps. Both are excellent solutions with various models to suit your power needs. Now, if you're running sound in various venues, biamping your mains, and spend a lot of time ringing out a room for monitor setup, the DCM LX will make your setups a lot easier. This video features the following topics broken into chapters. DCM LX short overview, X drive signal path, programming for biamp, biamp speaker connection, programming for bridge mode, X drive remote control software. Carvin currently offers two and four channel DCM LX power amps. The X in the model number refers to the X drive signal processing, which includes a 30 band graphic EQ on each input, four parametric EQs on each output, with high and low crossover filters a variable limiter, and delays up to 120 milliseconds for distance or driver alignment. 24-bit converters handle the 20 to 20 kilohertz bandwidth with extremely low latency processing. Carbon loudspeaker crossover settings are preloaded in each amp, making biamp setup easy. This is all controlled on the front panel and remotely by connecting a laptop via USB. Let's take a look at the front panel of one of the two-channel amps. The power switch, protect and bridge LEDs, are on the front. The input level controls function the same as any power amp and has corresponding signal LEDs and clip LEDs. The A1 and B2 buttons select the input output to be used in the xDrive software. The xDrive menu controls are to the left of the LCD screen. The system and utility buttons access those menus and the navigation arrows step through the menus and change settings. We'll go into this in just a bit, but first I'd like to walk you through a diagram that shows the signal routing. This visual will help you understand the order in which the signal is processed. We'll be reading this diagram from left to right. Let's look at input A. The signal enters through the XLR input and then passes through the input volume control that's on the front panel. Next, the signal passes through the 30-band graphic EQ and then through the matrix router. The router works similar to the bus assignments on a mixing console. The router allows you input A to be routed to any of the available channels. This is very useful for a number of situations. If you have mono audio that needs to be used on output 1 and 2, there's no need to use a splitter cable or feed two XLR cables into the amp. You can simply connect the mono signal into input A and use the matrix router to also send that signal to output 1 and 2. Notice that the router is post graphic EQ, so any EQ settings you apply to input A signal is also carried through the router. Following input A to output 1 through the router, the signal next passes through the four parametric EQs and low and high pass filters. This is where crossover filters are applied. If input A was a mono signal for subwoofers, a low pass filter would be applied to output 1. If this mono signal was feeding a two-way bi-amp speaker, input A would be routed to both outputs 1 and 2. Output 1 would have a low-pass filter for the low frequencies, and output 2 would have an appropriate high-pass filter for the mids and highs. Next, the signal goes through the delay circuit. Delaying the signal can help align drivers or speakers. Next, the gain circuit increases or decreases the overall signal. And finally, the limiter protects the signal from clipping. From here, the signal can either pass directly through the phase circuit or be internally bridged with channel B's amp. So let's set up a bi-amp two-way carbon loudspeaker. If you are using non-carbon speakers, I'll cover how you can set the crossover points from the speaker manufacturer's manual and specifications later. You might ask, what is bi-amping and why should I consider setting up a bi-amp system? In basic terms, bi-amping is the process of electronically filtering an audio signal to separate the low frequencies and the high frequencies. The low and high frequencies are then amplified separately into the appropriate drivers that can best reproduce those frequencies. This can provide a more efficient use of the power amplifier and drivers in the loudspeaker. Review the menu navigation chart in the Carbon DCM LX manual to become familiar with the scrolling order of each menu. To start, turn the inputs all the way down and power up the amp. Push the system button and use the left or right arrows to scroll through the menu. You should be arrived at the preset speaker menu. To enter this menu, push the system button again. Use the up and down arrows to scroll through the various carbon speaker presets.
H is for the high frequency crossover point and L is for the low frequency crossover point. Choose the TRX 2115L and push system. Now simply push the channel 1 button to assign the low frequency crossover to channel 1. We'll repeat the process by assigning TRX 2115H to channel 2. Next, press the exit button to exit the system menu. The DCM LX power amp is now set up to bi amp a TRX 2115 with accurate crossover points. Using a four conductor speak on cable, connect the speaker to output one on the power amp. Carbon's loudspeakers have compatible four pin connectors for bi amping. Simply switch the crossover to bi amp mode and connect the four conductor cable. Now let's look at setting up a subwoofer in bridge mode. Bridging combines the power from two of the channels into one output. Push the system button and scroll right to channel bridging. Then push system to enter. Use the up down arrows to turn bridging on and off. Note the LED has come on to indicate bridge is enabled. For the four channel model, use the left and right arrows to scroll to select either channels one and two or three and four for bridging. Push system to save the bridge setting. Continue on to the preset speaker menu. We'll scroll up to the LS1801 subwoofer preset and push system to select. Note that the screen will display the preset that is currently residing in channel 1. Push the channel 1 button to save the new preset. To connect, use a high current speak on cable connected to the bridged only output. Now we're going to take a look at the X-Drive remote control software. Note that the carbon speaker presets are stored inside of the power amps, so you don't need to use the external software to assign carbon speaker presets to the channels. If you're going to make use of the 30-band EQs, parametric EQs, and set up crossovers for non-carbon speakers, it's probably easier to use the X-Drive software controller where the interface is graphically displayed. The X-Drive software is available for free from Carbon's website. Download and install the Windows or Mac version. Note that on the current Mac version, you'll need to install the USB driver that comes in the download. Once installed, the software functions the same on either platform. You can use a USB hub to connect multiple DCM LX power amps if you run out of USB ports on your computer. Connect the USB cable to the back of the power amp. Power up the power amp and launch the X-Drive software. To start, let's proceed as if there were no available bi amp presets for your speakers. Using high and low pass filters, you can set your crossover points as long as you have the manufacturer's recommended specs. As an example, let's say the recommended crossover point is 1.8 kHz and the overall response is 41 Hz to 20 kHz. In the lower portion of the X-Drive screen, select channel 1. Set your high pass filter to 41 Hz. This rolls off frequencies below 41 Hz. Then select your desired slope from the drop-down menu. You have your choice of Butterworth, Bessel, or Linkwitz Riley. If you are unfamiliar with these IIR filter slopes, they are simply different choices of first, second, or third order filters. Your goal is to not amplify frequencies that are beyond the loudspeaker's capability. If the frequency response chart for your loudspeaker is available, you may select the slope that is close to the response chart. In this example, we'll select Butterworth. Now we'll address the actual crossover point where the high frequency driver will take over reproducing higher frequencies. With channel one still selected, We'll set the low pass frequency to 1.8 kilohertz, as the manufacturer specified. Select the same IIR filter slope for now. Note that the yellow channel one filter is displayed on the X-Drive chart above and channel two is in orange. Now select channel two. Set the high pass filter to 1.8 kilohertz. 
since the loudspeaker is capable of a response out to 20 kilohertz, you are not required to set a low-pass filter. Refer to the loudspeaker's manual for bi-amp speaker cable connection. If this were a subwoofer, you'd set it up in a similar way by using the response and crossover point to filter out frequencies that don't need to be amplified by the subwoofer. Those would typically be mid and high frequencies. Next, let's look at the other features of the X-Drive processing. If this amp were dedicated to powering a pair of monitors, the 30-band graphic EQ on each input is ideal for sculpting the best sound for mains and monitors by enhancing the sound and eliminating problem frequencies. The parametric EQs on each output will further sculpt the sound. Boosting or cutting frequencies is simple. Just select a frequency, set the Q or width of the adjustment, and then boost or cut. If this amp were a monitor amp and two monitors were used for one mix, set the router to send input 1 to both output 1 and 2. Input graphic EQ will only need to be adjusted on channel 1 as the router is post graphic EQ. The limiter is variable for each output channel. This is helpful in biamping as the high frequency driver may not be able to handle the full power from one channel of the amp. If the high frequency driver is rated less than the amp's continuous power rating, limiting the output will protect the speaker from possible damage. The settings can be saved for each process or save all settings together as a system. These can be stored on your computer's drive, backed up, recalled, and shared. The software can be set up without being connected via USB to the power amp. Settings can be applied to the power amp once connected. This can save a great deal of time by doing setup off-site. As you can see, the DCMLX power amps offer a great deal of processing that not only saves time in setting up, but it can save in rack spaces, weight, and the overall footprint, requiring less gear to do what used to require dedicated racks of processors. Visit carbon.com or carbonworld.com if you're outside the United States for specifications, more videos, user manuals, and details about each of the DCM LX power amps.